the best face-off man for Jim Montgomery. Dominic Toninato, the best face-off man for Scott Sandlin. Eyeball to eyeball on top of the dot. Toninato gets waved out. You heard the Bulldogs' reaction to that big call. Anderson, the freshman, does have it on his backhand. Well, it's second. Second didn't come off. No. There, was, there was 101 to go. It's flying. So again, the freshman, Joey Anderson, he has some strong wrists, and he could win this face-off back to Adam Johnson, who has a game-high eight shots, but is taken nicely on his forehand by Marcinou, and he's able to chip it, but, and they get it out. Out of midair, that was Dylan Gambrell who got that out of the zone. That's not going to make icing either, so Pion got to get back and get her. 50 seconds left. O'Connor, he's been a strong skater tonight. Gambrell. Oh, that could be icing. No, there's no icing. Now they touched it. Around. Butcher hit that a little too hard. It goes all the way around behind the net. Toninato. Butcher tries to clear it. The net is empty. Puck is loose. I have follow and O'Connor battle after it. Coleman tips it. Here come the Bulldogs again. Pionk, the defenseman, leads the charge. But a good stick worth there by Plant. Plant says it was tipped. Let's see where they decide where this faceoff is and if Denver can change. Toninato against Gambrell. Gambrell's on his backhand. Beautiful clean face-off win to Butcher. Butcher has throws away, follows it up, can't get it out. Puck is alive. Here go the Bulldogs. They have one more chance. Ten seconds left. Anderson in front. Bodies down. Anderson bad angle shot. The puck is wide. Four seconds. Another bank shot. It's loose. Denver has won the national championship for the eighth time. He's won one as a player, and now Jim Montgomery wins one as a coach. Tanner Gillette, Mike Richter Award winner and national champion with Quint Kesting. Tanner, congratulations. What was it like during, during that third period, especially the last five minutes where they just kept coming at you? Yeah, I mean, I feel like they're kind of taking us to it there, but we stuck with our game plan, and we made plays, and we fucking won. You made a big save, a kick save. Do you remember the one I'm talking about late? Oh, no, I don't. Sorry, I don't. What emotions are you dealing with right now? I mean, it's surreal. I'm so excited for all these guys. It's awesome. What do you think made the difference? I don't know. I don't know. Our, our desire to win, our work ethic, our, I don't know. I'm just so happy right now. I don't know. Congratulations. Bucci. What's up, guys? It's your boy, UMD Boss Man here. We are on our way to the Frozen Fest. Um, this is Lace's intro is after the fact. Today is the national championship game. You guys obviously know how it ends. Let's hope this intro is uh, for a good reason. Oh, Alright, I'm going to put some more. Yeah, 50. Will you? 
Here, how about you answer since you want to talk? No. Yeah, yeah do it. No. Get your, get your thumb out of the way. Oh, God. Oh, God. What? I'm taking a picture of Am's oil. There's no picture of Am's oil. Home ice, Minnesota ice. And last time Minnesota Duluth played here in St. Paul in this NCAA tournament back in 2011, they took home the gold trophy. It was Kyle Schmidt scoring the game winner in overtime against Michigan 3-2. This Duluth program has been on the national map ever since that. It's built by the state of Minnesota. 17 members of this Bulldog roster from the home state, including their two top lines, all of their defense and their goaltender, Coach Scott Sandlin, has built a powerhouse and will get statewide support today. Remember, a lot of these guys played high school hockey in the States. The fans can relate. When they took the ice, noise, energy, it's palpable. Could be a factor late in this game, Bucci. Scott Sandlin, born and raised in Hibby, Minnesota, played his college hockey at North Dakota, but helped bring this school its first national championship in this arena in 2011. The head the 2018 National Championship game is underway. No game, two to one. And then of course, both again the other night with a one goal victory. Great play on the wall again, huh? That's cool, man. Puck comes around, he got it out. Turnover. Coleman takes the shot. Rick oh! goal! Short side snipe from the senior Carson Coleman. This will be the final game he plays for the Minnesota Duluth Bulldogs. And what a way to start. I got to tell you why he deserves that goal. He deserves that goal because of the play he made on the wall about 10 seconds before that puck went in. He knew he was going to get hit. He made a great play getting that puck out around the wall. Excellent job. Then the puck's turned over. He gets it. Doesn't panic. Fakes a slapper. Goes to the wrister. And it's up under the bar, up by the ears. That's that's today's shooting area. You got to be able to put it up there with these goaltenders going down in the butterfly and taking the bottom of the net away. But he deserves it, as I mentioned, because of the, the guts he showed getting that puck. What a season for the Bulldogs. They finished third in the NCHC. Scott Perunovic, one of those five freshman defensemen, really burst onto the scene, all conference first team and rookie of the year. Miraculously, they got into this NCAA tournament. And it's their second straight Frozen Four. Scott Sandlin told us the other day he would not have thought before the season they would return to the Frozen Four. Here is the coach with our Quint Kesnick. Coach, tactically, what is your major point of emphasis right now? Well, right now, I think, uh, again, it's it's getting making sure we're getting pucks in behind and working down low. And we, we, got, we got some things we're working on right now that we're talking about uh, that we can maybe do a little bit better offensively. I think our, our gaps have been good. I think we've done a good job. And... I know when they get the puck in the zone, we got to make sure we're protecting the dots and above the goal line because uh, they like to get pucks there. Thank you, Coach. 
Right up by the ears of the goaltender. 90 seconds left in the first period. Nine shots for the Bulldogs, seven for the Irish. Coleman, the goal scorer. Shot, bad angle, it's in! Jared Thomas, again. Two nothing, Bulldogs. Well, Johnny, it was a bad mistake in the corner by the defenseman for Notre Dame. He had control of it, wasn't able to move it. Ended up then second four checker, which was Kuhlman, came in, helped out Thomas. They created a turnover, and then the shot from deep, basically on the goal line, beat the goaltender. And right here, Peaks got it. He loses it. Now there's a second four checker. This is great four checking, exactly how you're supposed to. And Morris was not against the post. So it was a bad mistake by Morris also. Peak made a mistake not getting that puck out quicker. Morris made a mistake in not having that post completely covered. So, uh, but that's just great forechecking by uh, the Bulldogs. And again, it's that line, it's a Thomas line. Again, getting the job done. Well, that goal cam shot once again told the story. That puck hit the but, but left seven or eight inches straight. opening space right there. And it just was able to hit it and go in. Well, if there was no goalie, the shot would have gone wide. Yeah, it wouldn't have went in. You're exactly right. Carson, you step on the ice tonight. The crowd's loud. What's the adrenaline like? What, what's the feeling like? Yeah, you know what? It's electric in here, obviously. Uh, we, we, the city of Duluth loves us, and we love the city of Duluth, and it's awesome to see the turnout that we got here uh, tonight. What happened on your first goal? Uh, I was fortunate to create a turnover there. Line mates did a good job, and uh, just caught him glove side there. Did, did the defender stick ramp that up, or, or, or was that your... Your wrister. Uh, I'll have to take another look at it. Might have, might have went off him, but uh, that's where I was aiming the whole time. Nice job, that, uh, Bucci. This line's been ultra productive. They got two goals. Absolutely, the 166th consecutive game for that man. He's never missed a game in four years. He'll never put on the sweater again after tonight. He's got a goal, and his team leads two nothing after 20 nothing. It's oh. Bulldogs, John Brickley. It's Bulldogs. is Hoagie Hagenson, Dale, the inspirational leader. 37 years he's been the assistant equipment manager for Minnesota Duluth, and he is a unique fabric of college hockey. Big part of this program, proudly wears his championship ring from 2011. Meanwhile, on the Notre Dame side, they've been playing for young Rudy Chapman, a five-year-old who's been diagnosed with bone cancer out of the Indianapolis area. He's a huge Fighting Irish fan. He's named after Rudy the walk-on. And for the last week, he's been basically a member of this Fighting Irish team. On the charter, in the buses, in the locker room. He loves the players. They love him back. And he is undefeated 5-0 and when he's on the scene for his Fighting Irish.
GSA Bulldogs.
One one for Hope Forehead, one one for Thomas. I said that this was going overtime earlier. What'd we say? Nope. Boy, yeah. shirt is good. Why we need this? He wants his shirt.
what I said. Yeah. Where are we going to get it? What do you mean? They ain't gonna be selling it yet. Oh yeah, they are. You think? I don't think they would have it ready, but they ain't gonna sell. They have enough for that. Uh, yeah. Rough, rough. rough. Yes, yeah, Bulldogs! Systems, you know, we got a we got a great couple of coaches, we got awesome leadership throughout the entire year, and uh, they're really jealous and uh, kept us kept, kept us together. How do you explain this entire scenario where you guys barely made the playoffs, then you go on this magical run? Where, 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 what, what's the genesis? Yeah, you know, no one would have expected it. You know, we barely got in. We know we got lucky with that, and uh, we're here and we won, and we couldn't be any more proud. How do you best characterize the way you guys played in the semis and the finals? Bulldog hockey. All the way, whole time. What's Bulldog hockey? <laughs> Heart, grit, everything it takes to be a good hockey player. You know, this uh, this team's a lot closer than just a team. We're a family forever. Great chemistry. Congratulations. Right. Thank you. Better to be lucky than good, but when you're both, that's really good. This, this team had five players on the World Junior team, Barry. There's talent on this Bulldog squad, and then there's that culture, that blue-collar ethic. Seniors like Carson Coleman, Blake Young. Jared Thomas. Only three seniors on this team, but look at him. Tears in his eyes. His last game as a Bulldog, and he's a national and, champion. And we mentioned the five freshman defensemen. Don't forget Nick Swaney, how good he is on the, with the Kuhlman line. You mentioned the two seniors. you got to have the third guy to make that line happen, and he's been fantastic. Krieger played a strong game. Tufty played a strong game. The goaltending was awesome. Their defensive scheme was fantastic against a very, very tough Notre Dame team that's very tough to play against with their heavy style, with their chipping it in, with their great defensive play. Minnesota Duluth, fantastic job. Hockey-wise, spectacular. 
to see the emotion on both teams. The seniors of Notre Dame, Bo Brower, Jordan Gross, Dawson Cook, and Jake Evans. You saw the tears in Jake Evans' eyes. They'll never played the last game, Johnny. They'll never put on the Notre Dame sweater yep, just, again. Just played their last game. It's hat. It's T-shirts. It's beach towels. It's trophy season. You better be recording. Yeah.